Hey guys, what is happening? Animetal Viking here, and welcome to the third episode of the Animetal Cast podcast with our special guest uh, Shinzo Genesis. Uh, for this episode, um, Claudio and Michelle couldn't make it uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, but um, n- nevertheless, I hope you guys uh, enjoy the show, and uh, as per usual, the links to um, Gabriel's channel will be in the description box below and at the end of this video, so sit back and enjoy the show, guys, and uh, yeah, see you at the end. Hey guys, what's happening, and welcome to the third episode of the Animetal Cast podcast with myself, Animetal Viking, and our special guest, uh, Shinto Genesis. So, how are you doing today? That's me. I'm doing alright. Uh, what's, what's going on? Uh, I'm doing great, I'm doing great. Um, so, um, now, <laughs> before we get started, would you like me to call you by your YouTube name, or can I call you by your real name, which is fine with you? Uh, you can call me whatever you want. Okay, so your name's Gabriel, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, sorry. It would just be a lot easier to say than Shinto Genesis all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get you. I get you. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, okay. Alrighty, so guys, unfortunately, um, Michelle and Claudio are unable to join us uh, due to uh, certain circumstances. So this is the first time I will be hosting the podcast on uh, by myself. So yeah, it's all cool. It's all cool. <laughs> So, You're doing a good job. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so, Gabriel, uh, can you tell us what exactly it is that you do on your YouTube channel for all the listeners out there? I make dick jokes. <laughs> and I review anime. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> dick jokes and anime go so well together. Yep. <laughs> they do. They really do. <laughs> That's great. That's no, I, I, uh, I review anime and I do... Uh different types of things i call break it down where i just talk about stuff that isn't necessarily a review but uh doesn't really fit anywhere else so uh yeah basically let's talk about anime that's my life awesome awesome so we're kind of in the same boat (laughs) so (laughs) so um now i always want to know uh ever since i found out about your channel um what channels inspired you to start your own channel and which of uh, channels are your favorite like any in particular Oh, uh, well, I mean, obviously Keemstar. No, um, <laughs> I like, uh, <clears throat> well, the inspiration for my channel was watching, uh, this is going to sound bad, um, but for, like, wanting to do anime in particular, it was Arcada because I saw his his early videos. I hadn't seen his recent stuff. I saw oh. his early videos, and I'm like, yeah, I saw how many views they had, and I'm like, I could do better than that. <laughs> and then I realized he got way better, and I was like, oh, shit. But, um... <laughs> In terms of, like, editing and style, it's a little bit of a mixture of uh, Game Theory, uh, Nostalgia Critic, uh, Philip DeFranco, and SourceFed. Ooh, that's awesome. Yeah, I noticed, because when I found your channel, um, which was with the Ergo Proxy review, um, Mm -hmm. and I I had to look for an Ergo Proxy review after uh, Digibro's whole (laughs) rant on how pretentious it was. (laughs) So, Yeah. yeah, so when I found your video... I couldn't help but notice when watching it, uh, like, as you said, uh, the channels you just mentioned, like, literally the moment the video started, and I started watching your video, you kind of reminded me, like, you you felt like a blend of, like, your, your the way your human personality was kind of like Markiplier, then you had the, the whole uh, skit thing with the, you know, the different character things popping up, like, um, Nostalgia Critic yeah. has with uh, his uh, staff, and... Uh, and uh, obviously the Arcada stuff, as you say, was there as well. So that's literally the first right. thing that went through my mind when I watched that video. And I was like, oh, this is really awesome. So, yeah, I'm glad I discovered your channel, man. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad I discovered yours, and I'm glad I'm on this podcast. It's weird how <laughs> often I get compared to fucking Markiplier, though. <laughs> like, it's, it's not the first time I fucking heard that. <laughs> like, I, I barely have seen anything that he does, and I don't... Get it? I'm like, I'm nothing like him. He's so much sexier. Why are you doing? I don't get it. <laughs> oh gosh, oh gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, no, it's a, don't, don't worry, dude. It's it. I I, I can assure you, it, it's not the hair. It's not the hair. <laughs> oh yeah, that. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah, yeah, maybe, it. but uh, yeah, but uh, for me, no, it was it wasn't the hair. Like, I mean, even. Even Lost Paws has been accused of being a Markiplier. So. <laughs> oh my god, I've had the I've 
this hair, <laughs> this is something since high school. This is something I've always done. Markiplier stole it from me. He never knew who I was. I didn't make any videos, but God damn it, I know he stole it from me. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of like when the pop stars start selling uh, t-shirts of their name in like Metallica logos and stuff. And it's like, hey, it, it, exactly. it, Metal got it first, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He Metallica'd me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. Um, now you mentioned in one of your videos that, uh, prior to, um, doing this channel, you used to make, uh, AMVs for a while. Like, do you still make any AMVs? Do you still post them somewhere or have you, uh, like departed from that? I've been wanting to because music is such a huge part. Music's a bigger part of my life than anime ever will be. And <laughs> I, I adore anime, obviously, or else I wouldn't fuck with it. <laughs> um, mu music's just a bigger part of my life. It's mm. just, it's everything. It runs the gamut of emotions and it's, you know, quick and just everything about music, it makes you feel something unless it's, you know, mm. shit. But um, th the thing is, uh, when it comes to making A and B's, I've been wanting to because I, I have all these different concepts and ideas that I could splice together with like my favorite bands and stuff. Mm. The problem is YouTube um, is really adept at fucking you. Yeah. So I'd, I'd rather not be fucked by YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that, that does tend to happen a lot. Like, um, uh, but I mean, I guess really it depends on the kind of music you use as well, because I know like, um, like a lot of, uh, you know, like the more popular artists, they tend to come down right. on you. But if you, if you, yeah. if you're going like with say, like, a, a, that's what I like about a lot of metal bands though, is that like a, a good portion of them, they don't care. The labels already got the claim to it. So they're not going to screw you over. They'll just let you use the stuff for the only pro uh, problem that comes out of that is that you won't get any revenue from it, but uh, uh, at least right. at least they won't come up to your channel and be like, "Hey, you're using our music." They'll just be like, "Oh, you can use our music," you know. It's it's all cool. Yeah. So it's the same thing with punk bands. Uh, I really into like the way you're into metal. I'm into punk. Mm. So uh, yeah, the when it comes to like punk bands, most of them don't give a fuck unless they're like Green Day and they're like, "Oh yeah, we're punk." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, aside from that, like they don't give a fuck whatsoever. But you're right, the revenue you just won't get any of it and i mean do you really deserve it for making an amb probably not but mm. at the same time it's kind of like you put in all that work maybe you know i don't know it seems a little unfair yeah yeah it's a really tricky thing because even though you are uh timing the clips and stuff and everything ultimately mm. in the end like uh an anime studio animated that stuff and uh, no matter how many overlays and you know transitions right. you do and <laughs> and uh, stuff but um but yeah, it's, it, it is a really tricky question, but I mean, I guess uh, if uh, you did the animation yourself, you know, like you right. animated well, it. That'd yourself. be a different thing. Yeah, then the, right. that's totally different. But yeah, um, but it is a tricky question because, uh, yeah, we're talking to Atman Todd about that. And yeah, he, he had the same kind of principle where he's like, no, nah, I don't monetize. Even the ones I can monetize, I don't monetize them. So yeah. Um, right. Yeah, AMVs are a tricky thing when it comes to that. But I guess AMV channels, most of them are, you know, they're just uh, done by people who just like doing it for fun. It's not all about the revenue and stuff. So, yeah. Right, that's true. Uh, but, I mean, uh, like, I'm old, so <laughs> fun, like, isn't something I have the luxury of. Mm. Um, I, I Basically, my whole YouTube channel is for fun, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I would rather, like, break down why something is good or why something is bad or tell my own story. Like, just put my own spin on something than try and take two things and mash them together in a way that is, uh, well, it's creative. It's not the creative outlet that I require. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, it, uh, but uh, I, I get what you're saying. So, um... Now, you say you have uh, these concepts and stuff, like what kinds of uh, concepts? I'm just a bit interested because I've dabbled in making some AMVs myself. Oh, man, just, I mean, honestly, I couldn't probably specify anything off the top of my head, but uh, every once in a while I'll hear a song, like, and I'll just go, oh, wow, that would go perfect for, you know, the show I just watched or whatever. And mm -hmm. um, oftentimes the ideas that I have, uh, involve like trying to make a new story out of the story that I just watched. So I'll watch something like, 
I don't know, Attack on Titan, let's just yeah. say. And I'll be like, okay, well, there's more to um, uh, the story than I think is being revealed. And so I'll try and tell, like, uh, in my head, as I'm making the AMB in my head, because I'm <laughs> fucking way too lazy to do it in any other way. Um, I'll, I'll kind of try to sync up certain scenes to the music in my head and be like, yeah, that'd be cool, that'd be cool, in a way that's less about, like, punctuating the sounds of the music. Like, oftentimes you'll see... Uh, like the action scenes matching to a beat. Yeah. Um, instead of doing something like that, I'd rather match like the lyrics or the emotion behind it or something like that, the tempo to what's going on. And yeah. That's kind of where my mind would go if I were to start doing that again. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. They, they, yeah, there are style of AMVs that do that because uh, a, mm-hmm. a good portion of them nowadays is um, literally just syncing up. But uh, I know what you're talking about, the whole... Um, you know, concept idea, because a lot of, uh, like, back in the day when YouTube just started, and you had, like, the really bad quality AMVs, like, a oh, lot of, yeah, yeah those were mine. everyone, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people um, used to do that with the AMVs and uh, all that, yeah. like, especially if you watch um, AMVs of, like, uh, Berserk or Record of the Lodos War, like, it's generally like that a lot. It's it's uh, not or you know Dragon Ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. mm. you yeah, know, with me, uh, with my MVs, uh, I have tried to sync them up uh, sometimes, though that's mainly because of Admin Todd's influence. But uh, right. But I do get obviously, like as you say, um, thematic with the stuff. Like for example, um, I was on holiday uh, a few weeks ago. And um, while we were on holiday, I was watching with my brother the um, rebuild movies of Evangelion. And uh, mm-hmm. while I was watching it, I could not stop thinking to myself, now I need to make an Evan- Evangelion AMV, whether it's using footage from the rebuild or the original. I need to make right. an AMV using music by Dimu Borger, because <laughs> that's some funny black metal shit with the apocalyptic well, side right. and stuff. Yeah, then it's like, well, that'll go well with uh, Evangelion. And the name for damn sure. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I know a few people have done it before, but like, um, oh, those AMVs are like really bad quality, you know? So <laughs> yeah. I watched a couple of them and I was just like, uh, you got you got the atmosphere right, but <laughs> so yeah, right. so so yeah. No, I'm not throwing shade at those people. So, yeah, those guys, uh, yeah, those guys did a good job for the time, but yeah, <laughs> right. And that's what you have to take into account is for the time. Mm. Like like I said, when I first saw Arcata, like I was watching his stuff, and I didn't realize I was watching his old shit, and I immediately judged, thinking I could do better than this. Turns out he had newer stuff out, and I was being a moron. So I mean, whenever <laughs> you look at anything, you have to you have to judge it for its time. You just kind of I mean, mm. if it holds up today, that's great. But if not, you know, then you really do have to kind of take into consideration the limitations of when it was made. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so I'd like to ask, what are some of your favorite anime series? Oh fuck. <laughs> um. Okay, I get, damn, how did I not expect this question? It's like the fucking question I get asked all the time. Um, <laughs> I, ha- I have a, like, rotating top ten because um, mm. there are certain things that I do have favorites of. Uh, for instance, my favorite television show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, because it hits every note for me. It's like, this is the perfect show for me. Mm. Um, but there's nothing like that for anime. And when it comes to anime, I find nothing that is perfect for me. So instead of having a favorite, I have a rotating top ten. Mm. And uh, that I can't, probably couldn't say them all off the top of my head at the moment. <laughs> but I could say at least a few of them. Um, and they all hit a different aspect for me. One is Great Teacher Onizuka. I think it's hilarious. Mm. Uh, Onizuka is one of the best characters um, in anime. It's, just, it's, it's really good. It has a few things that I'm not perfectly comfortable with but overall i think it's one of the funniest shows ever made anime or otherwise mm. um you have clanad which is just like you know when you want to like cry and kill yourself a bit, <laughs> that's fine. um uh there's a seer steins gate uh similar reasons but better storyline yeah <laughs> um yeah as far as i'm concerned uh i, I love clanad but i think uh steins gate just uh did a has a similar tone but did it better and was more succinct yeah 
Um, there's a show that used to be on Toonami that nobody ever remembers because I'm old, and it was called uh, Zoid's New Century. It was about battling robots, uh, like mechs that were shaped like animals, and some of them had certain levels hmm. of consciousness, others did not. I think that sounds but, um, familiar. It, yeah, it was like a tournament-style uh, mech battle thing, and mm. uh, there's just something about it. Something about it, the competitiveness of it, and it's 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 about a guy who like comes across a, uh, a mech that's called the Liger Zero, and it's basically a lion slash tiger. But really, at the end of the day, when you look at it, I'm going to do a review on it eventually, but uh, <laughs> the, the concept boils down to a boy and his dog versus the world. Even though it's a cat, it's a boy and his dog is <laughs> fucking white. Yeah, it's... So th that's, that's just how I see it. And I just, I think something about that resonates with me, because that's kind of how I felt as a kid. And the competitiveness also resonates with me. So there's there's a lot that resonates with me in that show. It's one of my favorites because of that. Um, Bacano, fucking amazing. I just, I adore Bacano. I adore Brains Base. And, uh, it's just, it's, I love it. I love the storyline. I love the quickness of it, the cleverness of it. It, it just speaks to me on that very, uh, clever, critical witticism kind of level yeah. that I like to try to, uh, to go for. Um, God, uh, Fruits Basket's another one. Uh, it's another one of those kind of uh, shoujo love stories. Uh, my friend introduced it to me back in like 2002. Mm. And uh, I just, more so than the show itself, the main character, or the one of the main characters, Keo. I just relate to him. I'm like, hey, that's me and why they put me in an anime. <laughs> um, and there's, there's, God, there's a few others. But those those are the ones that are coming to my head right now. Mm. Nice, nice picks. Uh, I, I haven't seen a good portion of those that you mentioned, but I have seen a few but uh i i've def I, I have added a bunch of those that you mentioned to my to watch list on <laughs> on my anime list but <laughs> but yeah no um they're pretty good yeah i i, I but uh me uh on my, my side like i i try to keep a top 10 but there are three mm. particular shows that never go out of my top 10 and those three in particular are um the original berserk the 1997 uh Mm -hmm. Ghost in the Shell standalone complex, both seasons, and um, Ergo Proxy. Like those three, never seem to leave my top ten. They always like my top three, <laughs> and then everything else just kind of seems to shift in and out, in and out, depending on like kind of like what uh, phase or mood I'm in at that moment right. in time. But uh, mm -hmm. I guess I guess you could say maybe. Um, Steins Gate or Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood usually stay there as well, yes. but uh, great choice. yeah, but uh, they're, they're, but like in terms of the others, like sometimes I'll watch like a romantic comedy and be like, oh, this is the best one ever, and then I watch another one, I'm like, oh damn, <laughs> now I got to choose. So, like, I, like yeah. I mean, I finished I finished uh, Toradora the other the other day, and uh, <laughs> so up until that point, I was like busy thinking like, oh, Shuffle and Nisekoi, and now I'm like, oh damn. <laughs> Right. So it's, no, yeah, the, it's harder with comedy because comedy evolves and there's different styles of comedy. So, like, mm. uh, for me, it was like uh, GTO was my favorite, is my favorite comedy. But um, then I saw like uh, Devil's Part Timer and I was like, oh, Devil's Part Timer is so fucking funny. It might mm. be funnier in GTO. And I saw Famufu, Full Metal Panic, and I'm like, oh, it's fucking great too. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, comedy is a little bit harder to gauge and a little bit harder to really list. I, I get where that's coming from. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but uh, but uh, like as you say, it's comedy that's the hardest. But the serious stuff, it can also depend as as well. But for the most part, it more or less stays the same because they are. Some shows that, although they have great action, they might not have a great plot, or they have a great plot, right. but the action could have been done a bit better. There are, like, so mm -hmm. many uh, examples of that, but, I mean, yeah, it's... Um, but I agree with you on the comedy thing there, because I still remember when I watched uh, Full Metal Panic, uh, uh, I thought it was the most hilarious shit ever, and then, uh, obviously, right. like, as you say, I go down a, uh, along the line and, like, oh... Okay, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's like, obviously, it's not that you don't enjoy those shows anymore. It's just like, you come across something different. So it's like, oh, that hits with me as well. So, yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah, um, because you're coming Now, is another question I have to ask in that regard is, uh, old school anime or new anime? Or do you like both? Oh, man. Uh, I think that old school anime and new anime is just the dumbest fucking conversation because <laughs> to me it's like it doesn't matter that's like saying we're old movies better than new movies yeah some of them yeah i mean you know like fucking citizen kane is gonna be better than fucking disaster movie you know <laughs> yeah. like 
it's just it depends on what it is like mm. if it's there's a lot i think people uh from my generation the older heads like 25 to like you know their 40s whatever mm. the, those guys are always gonna be like oh 90s 80s 70s yeah they're the best and that's because that's <laughs> what you grew up with partially. yeah that's also because there is um a lot of shit anime out right now like a lot of shitty anime right, right mm. now like i hate a comic got kill with everything <laughs> man. and i hate no game no life like uh, i just i hate so many of these new animes but people and people you know use that as evidence go oh well fucking anime is worse now because look at a comic got kill look at this look at sword art online blah blah, blah. <laughs> all these other shows that people are just shit on and they go, oh, yeah, well, anime is clearly worse now. It's like, no, you're fucking retarded. Like, it, <laughs> yeah. it's not that anime is worse. It's that there is more anime yeah. making it more. Yeah. It's spreading across the world. Therefore, the demand's higher. Manga's selling better. All these different aspects are causing anime to, mm. to be pushed out quicker, to be pushed out faster, yeah. to, to just spread it. And, like, that's the problem. There's still great anime. I mean, mm. this season I'm watching uh, Recreators and um, The Right Answer, and they're fucking great. Yeah. And even uh, My Hero Academia is not bad. I mean, I think, you know, Shonen is its own thing, but for a Shonen, it's pretty fucking good. Mm. So, that, no, I don't think there is a correct answer in old versus new yeah. anime. Uh, I, you know. Yeah. No, I, I agree there. Uh, uh, I just like to ask it, you know, for, for you know, entertainment purposes. But right. yeah, I, I agree with you there because um, it, it's the same with uh, music, you know, because like the, uh, the the metal community is so, you know, um, uh, how do you put it, like butthurt about a lot of things. Mm. Like the veteran metalheads will be like, oh, 80s uh, uh, thrash, you know. Uh, and nineties death metal and black metal. They'll be like, oh, that's that, that's the shit. Everything now, all this new metal, metal core, death core, whatever, <laughs> yeah, that, uh, right. coming out now is total crap, you know. And then mm. I, I sit there and I'm like, it, 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 dude, like the the reason why you say that is because, like, um, as you said, um, the music industry now, like, people can just produce music. And the demand for it is like so big now that you literally have to sift through all the the piles and piles of crap to find the good stuff. So like whenever yeah. people are like uh, saying uh, uh, that uh, like uh, for example, let's take the deathcore scene. Everyone's like saying like, oh yeah, Attila, oh the Fron Franz guy, you know, and he's uh, a rap screaming or whatever, trying to be you know like new metal with deathcore, like. Oh, death calls bad. Oh, suicide silence. Look at them now. Uh, but I mean, like, in, in my, my mind, I was like, I would like say to those people, like, okay, you all, there are good bands in that genre. I mean, like, you need to take bands like uh, Carnifex, for example. They're doing some great stuff with the whole black metal, death metal incorporation into right. death call. Then you got uh, Infant mm -hmm. Annihilator with that insane drumming and technical stuff. Um, Right. got slaughtered to prevail with Alex Terrible's vocals and all his different influences. Like, there's so m much good stuff in the genre. It's not just Suicide Silence and Attila. Right. So. <laughs> well, I mean, like, in the 90s with New Metal, mm. like, who was the face of New Metal? Fucking Limp Biscuit, Fred Durst. Yeah. He was the face of New Metal. So if you judge it by Fred Durst, yeah, it sucks balls. <laughs> but that's not all there is to it. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, that's why, like, yeah, the... the, but, uh, the it's the and as you say, it's the same in the in the anime community as well. Like I mean, um, mm -hmm. a, a lot of uh, like new generation uh, anime fans will be like, "Oh, I don't like the old school stuff because either they can't st stomach the old animation or yeah. something like that." But I'm like, well, not all of it is, you know. Like for example, like they'll probably see a clip of uh, I don't know, a uh, uh, freaking Violence Jack, you know, that weird shit that they yeah. had then, and I'm like, no, not. All old school animes like that, you know. I mean, you have no, well, great yeah. stuff as well. That's, so that's like turning down a Lamborghini because you don't like the color. Yeah, like it's fucking dumb. It's I don't know. <laughs> People need to get over. I think visuals are the least important aspect of anime. I think uh, the least important aspect of anything. Mm. They are still important. Don't get me yeah. wrong. But I mean, if it has a good story, if it has good characters, 
that is far more important and to be honest in terms of distracting things um visuals aren't what distract you yeah audio is if it has bad audio a bad dub if it has a bad recording like that's what's really gonna fuck you up and that's what's gonna make it unwatchable mm. you can watch something that's poorly animated and really a lot of the shows back in the day at least in the 90s and shit you got your triguns your bebops your ghost in the shells your akiras they hold up today yeah and uh like you said about the visuals the same goes for um the uh the original uh, 1997 berserk like that show has mm -hmm. the worst animation ever but because of its uh directing the soundtrack the foley and everything like that and the fact that they were able to keep it pretty much to the source material with only some minor minor changes it's still right in its own way holds up today despite the fact that the moments where there's animation you might laugh at some of the things and be like ah oh, this is kind of dated you know but you'll still come back and yeah. watch it regardless so um no, yeah. yeah so i agree with you there it's not about the visuals but there are times uh i feel like the like a, a, again going back to berserk like the new berserk where those visuals they just uh, they, not only is it bad visuals too but i mean that particular adaptation it has like bad foley i mean gut sword sounds like a frying pan the meme is everywhere mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um this uh, music added in unnecessary places it sounds like a like a total noise it doesn't have any yeah. atmosphere to it it's just like you're basically just watching a guy who's basically discovered 3d animation for the first time and it's like oh i wonder what i could do with it you know <laughs> so, right yeah it can yeah. be distracting at times visuals but like you say it's mainly the the audio and the story that really counts because i mean there are plenty of anime out there that have uh fantastic visuals but really really bad stories so yeah oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh gosh yeah so that's what i have to say as well i really agree with you there with the whole old school uh, this is a uh, new new school anime thing um mm. so how did you first get into watching anime like what were some of your first ones or anything like that uh well when i was a a wee little one <laughs> uh we had like i think we had like five tv stations mm. and uh it was like old turn dial tv and shit like that oh yes so um right so what would happen is um every uh weekend i think uh i would uh turn over to telemundo the uh the spanish station because i live in la mm. And so uh, I would turn over to Telemundo because they would be showing um, different anime. They had uh, they had some Sailor Moon. Uh, they had Speed Racer. Mm. They had like you know that kind of old hokey shit. But um, <laughs> I would watch that because it would. Uh, well, first off, I was a kid. Secondly, <laughs> um, ECW would come on afterwards. Yeah, and I was really into wrestling. So uh, I kind of got into it because of that. Like, kind of through my need to watch wrestling, I got into anime, and then. Uh, you know, I, I got into Sailor Moon, and I'm like, oh, wow, what's this? Now my pants are tight. <laughs> and then, like, you know. Yeah. And fucking, uh, you know, Speed Racer, I was like, I want his fucking car. And just all that kind of shit. And then uh, Toonami happened, and that just yeah. really fucking lit off of everything, you know. That's when anime became a thing, really, in America, was Toonami. It blew the lid off. Mm. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, that's that's pretty much the progression of it. Mm. Wow. No, that's awesome. Um, yeah, for me though, like we uh, on our side here uh, in South Africa, like uh, for for me, it was um, started with uh, I think it was uh, I think it was either Pokemon or Dragon Ball Z. I cannot remember which one came first, but it was uh, somewhere around there. And uh, now, obviously, that was when I was uh, also, as you say, uh, a little kid. And at the same time, right. and they uh, they'd show it like they'd show an episode of those shows like last thing in the off uh, afternoon before switching back to the adult programs like um yep. because uh uh before that i would sit and i'd watch like you know the dc animated universe or um the old school the 90s uh uh, uh marvel cartoons um spider-man yeah, x-men Sp batman the animated series superman yeah all that stuff because i was uh, I, I was and still am uh, pretty big into superheroes as well um, oh, yeah. yeah, so um, uh, through watching that, then right at the end, I'd see that, and obviously, you know, it's different from the other stuff that they were piling on before. So I really oh, got yeah. into it like that. 
Um, but then I remember they used to show several other less popular anime. I guess they were maybe popular, I don't know, in some places in Europe or something like that. I don't know. But they'd mm. show them uh, uh, here. Um, and I'd see like glimpses of it, but I wouldn't be like, you know, interested in it. But uh, whenever Dragon Ball Z still came up and stuff or whatever, I'd still watch that. And then I only really got back into anime again. I think it was when um, I was just about to go into high school. And uh, my cousin, he, he gave us his old uh, computer. And uh, mm -hmm. he had a whole bunch of anime on there. And he also had a, he also had a whole bunch of anime soundtracks. So um, I remember we found uh, Bleach on there. <laughs> um, uh, what else? Uh, we had, he had Bleach, um, a couple of Ghibli movies. Uh, of Ghibli, however you say it, I can never say it right. <laughs> he, had, he had a whole bunch of stuff there. He had a lot of the old school stuff as well, like Escaflown, which my, which I was going to watch, but then my brother deleted it like an ass <laughs> to make space for it's games. Right. <laughs> but um, uh, well, yeah, yeah uh, he had, uh, I think he had uh, some Macross or something. I don't know. He had a whole bunch of that stuff. And uh, like I say, soundtracks he had like, uh, the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack, the Witch Hunter Robin. He had yeah. he had all that stuff on there. So that's pretty mm. much what got me back into anime. And I was like, uh, obviously, Bleach having, uh, you know, the, uh, the, you could say, even though in comparison to the stuff I watch now, it, it, that was like the first, like, proper violent anime I watched, you know, with all the ridiculous amount of blood going everywhere. So, right. <laughs> yeah. So at the time, I was like, oh, this is really violent and cool. And then later on, it was like, as it progresses, um, I watched like Naruto um, and all the other popular shonen. And then uh, at a certain mm. point, I was just like, you know, I can't take these long ongoing shows anymore, you know, like, um, because I mean, it just goes on and on and there's all the filler and stuff. And while they, like you said in your one video, while there is some good filler, there is a lot of bad filler as well. So unfortunately, right. there was all the bad filler. <laughs> so I was like, now nah, I can't yeah, take yeah. this anymore. So then uh, my uh, cousin started giving us some of the shorter series. So then we got into stuff like Elf and Lead, Dead Man Wonderland, all that stuff that's coming out there. Mm -hmm. and I, so it, pretty much ever since then, I can only watch like series that have a definitive end. Like it ends at a certain episode, even if it ends with right. a go read the manga thing. I'd rather like, you know, w complete an anime like that than you know, watch it until I'm a hundred years old and don't care anymore and it's still going. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, um, mm -hmm. that's pretty right. much how I, I got into anime. Um, so, yeah, and uh, also, obviously, as a kid, my, my cousin had, uh, you know, all the, the DVD, well, videos, VHS at the time. He had, like, Ninja Scroll lying around, <laughs> Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. So, I didn't get to watch it. I was just told as a kid, like, no, you can't watch that. You know, it's a, it's not for kids. <laughs> but I, I, right. I do remember, because my cousin is a graphic designer, you know, he used to do, um, he used to draw a lot of fan art from these different series and stuff. So, he did draw a lot of uh, uh, Ghost in the Shell inspired artworks and things and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, that was, uh, that's pretty much what got me intrigued in it as, as a small kid that like, yeah, as I said, uh, only when it came to high school, it was like, Oh, bleach. And then it kind of progressed from there. So yeah, that was my side. Of things. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, let's see. I'm sorry. I'm just looking through all this stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, uh, what other kinds of TV shows or hobbies do you enjoy outside of anime? Um, I'm really into S and M. No, um, <laughs> I like. <laughs> uh, I like. Uh, <laughs> so you read a lot of Sunstone. <laughs> no, no, I like. Um, I like to write. Uh, to read. Uh, mm. shit. I don't know. I like to shit. Uh, I like to write and to read. I like, um, I, I just like video producing in general. Uh, mm. and just anything creative, creative outlets or just the business. Um, I play some, uh, well, I play a lot of video games. But, um, some of them I play more than others, mm. like League of Legends, things of that nature. Um, yeah. God damn, what else do I do? What is my life? Who am I? Um, I don't know, like I said before, my favorite TV show is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, mm. and I know a lot of people are going to hear that and be like, oh, it's Twilight, and I'm going to tell you to go fuck yourself, because you're wrong. It's <laughs> fucking, it's, me, bro. It's Twilight, it, 
Yeah, God. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't, we're, that's a different topic. That's a different podcast. <laughs> yeah. Just watch Buffy. Just fucking watch it. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, it's just, fuck, there's a lot of stuff, man, that I'm, like, I'm really into, uh, like I've said before, punk music, uh, big time, I fucking was starting to learn to play various instruments, and I <laughs> quit, because I'm me, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm just into a lot of different stuff, trying to learn, uh, woodworking, get back into skateboarding, I used to do that when I was a kid. Oh, nice. Um, just, I don't know, man, I just, I do everything, trying to make my own props for videos, which is part of the reason my videos take so long to come out. Yeah. Just, man, just a myriad of things. <laughs> yeah, that's dedication, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, um, no, that's awesome. Like, I mean, yeah, obviously I enjoy stuff outside of anime too. Like, I mean, that's why I decided to dedicate uh, my channel to metal music as well because I, I right. love the music. I love that genre to death. I mean, I love all kinds of music, but metal is like the one I tend to gravitate and listen a lot more of than the mm -hmm. others not because i don't enjoy the others it's just because there's like a you know that whole energy and that whole community thing you know about it yeah. that's it's the one that speaks to you the yeah most. yeah um yeah so and you're real smart to do that by the way because now that i started with anime right yeah i feel like i'm pigeonholed into it and like if i want to talk about something else it's not going to go as well. Either people will react differently or it just won't get as many views. So it was actually smart of you to diversify what you're trying to do. Because my dumbass was just like, <laughs> I can do anime. I'm better than our car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but don't worry about it, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So, yeah, I because pretty much when people uh, meet me for the first time, like I will literally n not stop talking about other anime or music like mm -hmm. literally that's all i'll freaking talk about um but uh yeah so i just decided to myself i consider myself to be fairly knowledgeable about metal music like i don't claim to be the biggest experts on it or anything like that but i just like to right. talk about it you know because there are a lot of bands that i listen to i'm pretty sure a lot of people feel this way when it comes to certain artists but there are a lot of bands that i listen to that i feel like you know they maybe don't get the the credit that they deserve or they just really underrated like a prime example like um uh my friend claudio he actually got me into a band called um uh dream shade and they're from uh switzerland but these guys mm -hmm. I, I literally cannot believe how underrated they are these guys are freaking insane guitar uh, players uh they they their sound is like a mixture of uh um, a melodic metal core, melodic death metal, and some, uh, there is some, like with their latest album, there is some, uh, of that, you know, anime J rock vibe to it. It's like, and it's got, oh, yeah, good. and it's got some Devin Townsend elements, you know, it's got, it's, it's, it's literally a whole mixed bag of stuff. I freaking love it. And then you go watch their videos and it's like, they don't have many views. They, they aren't, yeah, they, they aren't very recognized and like, Oh damn! <laughs> Why are these guys? And then I tried looking for an AMV, uh, some AMVs using these guys' songs. I only found two, and the one that used uh, one of their recent songs that I really enjoy. It's it's a uh, you know the anime K. Yeah. Yes. So someone made a AMV using one of their songs with the K anime, but they didn't use the full song. And there's nothing that pisses me off more when a person doesn't use the full song. So I'm just like, yeah, that's fucking. Yeah, <laughs> it like fades out after the uh, the first guitar solo, and I'm like, oh come on, but you could have done with you know the second one and, <laughs> and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, but yeah, so that's why I like to talk about a lot of music. Uh, I like uh, anime soundtracks, obviously. Um, you know, I'm, I was raised on, I was saying to Atman Todd in the last, uh, in the first episode, I was raised on classical music, religious music, new age music, you know, mm. all that kind of stuff. And then right. when I discovered Linkin Park, I was like, oh my God, I want this stuff. <laughs> and then obviously, <laughs> yeah, and then obviously Batman Beyond soundtrack was metal as fuck. So, oh yeah, that was dope. Yeah, so, the, oh, that's such a good mm, one. and the Devil May Cry games kind of helped with that as well, because everything's yeah. just metal about that. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's just pretty much what I decided to do. Um, and the channels that got me to start going were pretty much guys like, uh, um, uh, Ranton Shades, Cover Killer Nation, uh, Digi Bro, uh, um, uh, the Anime Man, you know, <laughs> all that stuff. Although I don't right. have the same humor or anything like that, I'm, I'm, I'm too much of an awkward guy 
for humor. So I tend to do my stuff like very oh. serious and, you know, like, oh, very formal. <laughs> so well, that's the thing. We're all awkward, though. Like, if, especially if you're on YouTube, the point I think of YouTube and people are going to disagree with this. But the point of being on YouTube is to fucking get attention. We're all attention. Whores. That's the problem. <laughs> Where everybody in the world is an attention whore, it's just some of us have the balls to put ourselves out there. Mm. So, like, if you're sitting there going, I'm not an attention whore, I don't even like when people look at me. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yes, you do. You just think that fucking, oh, it's gonna make people look at me more if I say that. Yeah. The point is, for YouTube, is to be an attention whore. And the thing is, <laughs> like, a lot of people, all of us, are super fucking awkward. I'm super fucking awkward. <laughs> Even though I probably don't come off that way. The reason that I come off so, like, aggressive all the fucking time about my opinions and about everything that I say mm. is because I'm so awkward. It's like, oh, yeah, well, if I'm aggressive, you can't say shit. <laughs> so, that's, yeah. right? So, I mean, that's the thing, though. Like, you shouldn't be afraid to show your humor and or, like, you shouldn't be nervous. Because here's the mm. thing. Everybody's just as fucked up as you. Everybody. They're just as scared. And the only reason that they would talk shit is because they are insufficient in and of themselves that's the thing you gotta realize mm. when somebody's talking shit it's because they are quite literally a little bitch mm. so the thing that you need to think about when you're you know scared to do and this is for anybody obviously this isn't just for you but when you're scared to like uh show humor when you're scared to because you think people won't get your humor somebody out there is going to get your humor i mean look at fucking austin powers mm. who the fuck thought that would work but everybody loved it you never know what's going to hit you never know what's not going to hit but somebody out there is going to like who you are they're going to like your humor they're going to like the way you think they're, you're going to have people that agree with you mm. that's all there is to it you just gotta be unafraid enough to put yourself out there and say what the fuck you mean yeah yeah i totally agree there man but uh yeah i, I don't know how it is with me though with me it's just i guess you could say it's kind of just because of the fact that uh i'm very you know um how to say it i'm very analytical and i've uh, ever since uh school days you know i've pretty much been like that guy who's always like um yes i get everyone's humor and stuff and i don't fight or take offense to anything you know i just laugh at everyone and stuff fun mm. stuff funny. I, like i don't get offended easily at all but um right. uh, but uh I, I like always when i t uh, try and uh, tell jokes and shit i'm always that guy like yeah tell a joke and then everyone's like bruh and then awkward silence so <laughs> that's mm -hmm. me in the group but yeah <laughs> Well, I mean, The Office does well, right? Or The Office did well, and that was all about awkward. <laughs> oh, yeah, Steve Carell. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so, <laughs> sorry to change the topic, man. Um, now, uh, you say you, now, obviously you mentioned you uh, enjoy punk music, but uh, are there, is there any other kind of music you enjoy, and do you have any favorite artists, bands, or albums? Oh, man, my... My favorite artists, uh, okay, I enjoy everything. Mm. Um, I even enjoy one or two country songs, which is weird because generally I, like, that's the one thing where I make an exception. Yeah, know, fuck country, that seems to be like that, like, yeah, right. everyone. <laughs> yeah, right, that's like everybody. But no, I've heard a few and I'm like, all right, that's not too bad, that's not too bad. Same with, like, gospel and all that stuff. Like, there's there's something good in every genre, you just gotta kind of pick for it. Mm. But um, the, my favorite bands confuse the fuck out of everyone because they're like, how are you even a person? You're like an amalgamation of shit that doesn't go together. <laughs> so, um, it's true. Yeah. Um, my fucking, okay. Linkin Park's first two albums is one of my favorite bands. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I agree there. Uh, fucking, right? <laughs> the Clash, um, Breaking Benjamin. Mm, they're good. Uh, Rise Against. Yeah. Fucking uh, Avril Lavigne, the Goo Goo Dolls. Mm. See, it starts getting weird. Don't <laughs> um, <laughs> no worry. Fucking, yeah. it's just like, yeah, I just, I kind of have this broad spectrum of things. It's basically, if I can listen to your entire album and not skip a song, yeah. you're probably going to make it into like my top 100. So like Al Avril Lavigne's first two albums, they both go in. Uh, Meteora and uh, Hybrid Theory, they both go mm. in. Almost every Breaking Benjamin um, album that's ever come out, everything The Clash has ever done, um, like the Goo Goo Dolls, I guess, like their first two, um, Black Balloon and A Boy Named Goo, I think is their <laughs> name, is their, were their first mm. two, is that what it was? I don't remember, but um, anyways, yeah, there's there's a few different artists that can go in that category, but then there's a ton that can, mm. yeah, I still enjoy the majority, like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, if you listen to their discography, like 90% of it is fucking muff cabbage it is hot garbage it sucks balls <laughs> but then the other 10 percent fucking gold mm. so it's like you know that that's kind of the give and take with a lot of bands because they are experimental they try out different uh 
sound. Yeah. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Especially like if we're talking like <laughs> how Suicide Silence's latest album crashed and burned. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah um, Fucking same thing with Guns N' Roses. Mm, yeah. So yeah, the, the, those are some pretty awesome choices, and I mean, like, there's no, there's no shame in like, you know, like liking a lot of stuff, like you know, like you say, like Avril Lavigne and stuff. Like, I mean, I grew up with uh, Avril oh. Lavigne stuff as a kid, you know. Yeah. So like, I mean, obviously, I still enjoy, enjoy a lot of those songs that used to play on the radio when I was mm-hmm. a kid, and I'm like freaking 22 now and then, like some people be like ah that son is so old you know so i'm like i don't give a fuck but whatever oh, so yeah <laughs> i'm 30 i don't give yeah, a fuck. I, like you don't a lot of people say they don't give a fuck but like i don't give a fuck <laughs> i don't oh i don't even know what shame is yeah if somebody like if somebody's like oh you should be ashamed of yourself i'll just whip out my dick and start helicoptering around the room <laughs> like i don't give a fuck i'm too old to care about your opinion bitch like, I don't give a fuck about your thoughts. You aren't even old enough to form an opinion. You aren't a person. Have you felt pain yet? Like, oh, I'm sorry. I get what No, no, I'm no. no. <laughs> you start helicoptering. That just had me. <laughs> Dude. Oh, God. That's hilarious. No, but I get what you're saying, though. Because, like, um, for me, uh, like I said, uh, uh, I, uh, how I got into metal, the whole Batman Beyond, DMC, Linkin Park, etc., but um, for me, like na- at the point where I'm at now, l- like when I go check out music, like um, <clears throat> when it comes to uh, 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 metal music, I will literally be like, like uh, for the past three years, I've been really heavy into deathcore music. But there are a lot of bands, not albums by these bands, but just them in particular. There are a lot of bands like I've, I've kind of outgrown. Like for example. Uh, I've outgrown Suicide Silence, but I do. But the albums of theirs that I really enjoy, I still freaking jam to that stuff. It's just uh you know, I'm not like such a diehard fan of them where I like, you know, like, oh, I'll defend you to the death, you know. <laughs> so right. it's it's like that, you know. So like, I enjoy That's... a lot of their stuff with Mitch Lucker. I did enjoy the first album they did with Eddie Hermida, but this new one was like, I mean, <laughs> it was a total crash and burn uh, because Corn released a much better album a few months before yep. and it was a lot heavier mm-hmm. so yeah yeah they come trying to like rip it off and the, and the song writing was just all over the place and everyone was like dude so I, I i battled to listen to that album for for the review that i did on my channel so it really was a struggle that album was a pure struggle and i mean um Corn- hmm? sorry I was gonna say, Corn is such a tidal wave of a band, aren't they? Like, they'll come out with something that blows your fucking mind away. Yeah. And then, like, their like their next album and a half is just like, why did they do this? It's so weird how they have <laughs> yeah. these peaks and valleys. Yes. It's so interesting. I find them so fascinating. I really. Yeah. Do. So yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, Corn are very much like that. Um. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, like, uh, so I've really been into deathcore, but now I'm into bands like, as I mentioned earlier, like. Slaughter to Prevail, Oceano, Infant Annihilator, mm. The Faceless. Good. Yeah. Um, mm. Oh, shit. Who's the other one? <laughs> Fuck. I cannot remember their fucking name now. There's so many of them. But um, yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I've pretty much listened to all those ones. Oh, Carnifex. Yeah, Carnifex are pretty sick. Go. And. Um, okay. um, mm? All right. It's good. Mine's going to be two files because of that. Um, okay. I have no idea what the fuck I was talking about now. Um, oh, yeah, I do. Okay. So. Okay, so basically, my thoughts are that you were saying that um, you felt like you outgrew uh, the older stuff back uh, when, you know, when you started getting into heavier metal and stuff like that. And I felt the same way uh, when I was about 22 to 25, somewhere in that range. I started getting mm. heavier into punk, uh, like different, you know, punk bands, Sex Pistols, Ramones, Clash, um, Suicidal Tendencies, Misfits, uh, No Effects, mm. all that stuff. And so when I started doing that... I uh, started thinking to myself, oh, I'm like, I'm past Avril Lavigne and Blink-182 now. Like, I don't need, I don't need those, you know, I'm, I've grown out of those. <laughs> because, you know, the, that's not, it's not real punk. Like, in comparison, Green Day, all that stuff, you know, especially, like, when you get later on into Fall Out Boy and um, Taking Back Sunday, that kind of stuff, you know, they're, oh, we're punk. Mm, really, though, are you? And, but, and so I felt like I grew out <laughs> yeah. of that. But, um, as I got older, and I'm not saying this is the case for you or anybody else, this is just what happened to me is yeah i i started listening one of my friends like his favorite bands blink 22 he's got like their little smiley face on his arm and all that shit and so 
I'm, uh, I'm, he's like, oh, yeah, fucking, we're going to listen to some Blink-182. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'll be 16 again. And so when uh, he started listening to it, I was like, I'm sitting there bobbing my head at all the small things. Like, oh, wow, yeah, I forgot how yeah. much I like them. And so at some point, I started realizing um, I didn't I didn't grow out of it. I just, I got more pretentious about it. I was like, oh, you know, fucking Social Distortion is a much better band than blah, 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 and fucking, and all these other things. Yeah. And so I, I just, I... I don't know, like, you know, I'd get into, like, Bad Religion and all these other things because I thought they were smarter and I thought they were better, but they're mm. not necessarily. I mean, it's just because something is popular doesn't make it bad, and I started to realize that, and I started to kind of yeah. go back to the older bands uh, that I listened to at first that got me into the other stuff, and I appreciate them now for getting me mm. into the older stuff, and some of it I think I, at the time, related to more, and because of that, the fact that... um I related to it, uh, like Avril Lavigne, you know, I related the way the fuck to Avril Lavigne and to Blink-182. <laughs> and so, uh, at the time, and I think I appreciate them more as a, a band or as an artist than I do the stuff I got into later. Because while well, the stuff I got into later is technically better music, um, outside mm. of The Clash, I don't relate to it nearly as well. I don't relate to, like, the casualties, I don't relate to the Sex Pistols, I don't relate to them nearly as well as I still, to this day, can see myself relating to Blink-182 or Avril Lavigne, and especially yes. as much as I related to them back then. Yes, so, yes. You know what I mean? Yes, I do, yes. Yeah, uh, I, I totally get what you mean. But yeah, I uh, 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 like um, when I uh, when I say uh, say though I'm just uh, saying this for further clarification. Mm -hmm. When I say I've outgrown suicide songs, what I mean is like you know the the fan base surrounding them. You know the whole fan base surrounding oh, them. That's yeah, yeah. part that's... of it. I've outgrown, but I still yeah. enjoy their music. Like I still listen. I still jam to the cleansing. The Black Crown, the No Time to Bleed, although that's not the right order they were released in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, I still jammed to um, the first album they did with Eddie Hermida. Like, I, I jammed to all that, but I'm, I, I'm not, uh, like, and I still really, really enjoy it. It's just uh, uh, now that I've explored the genre a lot, uh, like, a whole lot deeper, and I've found, like, all these other bands that are doing, uh, that are, like, uh, really evolving the genre right. in the sense that they're not changing their genre completely like suicide silence did mm. they, 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 then then it's kind of like you know yeah but i mean like i obviously like as you say i still go back and i still enjoy it i still jam to those albums and the same goes for a lot of the stuff i grew up with in my childhood like i mean uh some of the artists i was raised on include like uh, uh enya i still go back still listen to a lot of enya i freaking love enya um right. The Van Gillis, the guy who did the Blade Runner soundtrack, and oh, okay. that okay. I love all his stuff. Especially my favorite album of his has to be. Um, he, he, the, he has two albums that are named the same, but the one is a is a movie score for like a indie film that was done in I think in uh, in Greece, and the one is an original one that he did based on uh, the artist Al Greco's paintings. Okay. He did, a, he did a whole movement thing, like, you know, like how classical musicians do, like, movements yeah. based on stuff. Yeah, he uh, he did a whole album based on that. It was one of my favorite albums of all time. I could listen to it for hours then. And uh, it's because of genres like that mm -hmm. that I was able to really relate to and appreciate guys like Susumu Hirasawa, who did the original Berserk soundtrack, uh, Paprika soundtrack, The Millennium Actress, I can really get into that because yeah, of that the, being yeah. yeah because of being raised on that so mm. when i listen to susume hirasawa i'm like oh yeah i freaking dig this you know this electronic music that still sounds um you know like it, uh, very classical in composition and kind of has that you know fantasy element to it instead of sounding like your typical you know like rave woohoo stuff yeah <laughs> so, yeah, and obviously I heard a lot of trance music as a kid as well. So obviously I still go and check out a lot of classic trance anthems, and, uh, and I, while still appreciating the new stuff, like I really dig this uh, guy called Alethius. He does this stuff. Uh, he adds a lot of these grand orchestral parts to mm -hmm. his trance uh, songs. So yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. Like, um, but yeah, I've, I've, I don't think I've ever really gone through the phase like a lot of. Uh, people my age go through where it's like oh i'm into these more better bands now you yeah. know like i mean like uh, i can uh, like we all know suicide science is not the best deathcore band mm -hmm. but they are one of the uh pioneers of it and their the, the first album was very influential to a lot of the bands who are doing 
technically better stuff right. and are uh, producing better records now. So there's no denying that. So I, I can always appreciate where something came from. And yeah. that's uh, one of the many great things about music. And that's why I love listening to music so much. Yeah, I agree. 100%. Mm. Uh, sorry, I'm just, uh, just going to quickly get up and close the door. Oh, no <laughs> I problem. can hear I can hear shouting in the back. Oh, <laughs> this is some fight going down. <laughs> I'll just take that part out. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much like my whole um, stance on you know music and you know like going back to revisit stuff and everything like that. But uh, yeah. Um, I don't think I mentioned some of my favorite albums and artists. Like, um, uh, with regards to Dream Shade, their recent album, Vibrant, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I highly recommend you check it out if you, right. if you like uh, all the genres you mentioned and stuff. Um, and J Rock. Um, I, I re- really enjoy Devin Townsend's music, whether he's in Strapping Young Lad or whether he's uh, doing the Devin Townsend project. Other ones, fine with me. That guy's a freaking mad scientist. <laughs> um, so I think my favorite album of his is, um, I think it's called Epica. I think that's it. Um, no, Epic Cloud, sorry. Epic Cloud, I was thinking of the band Epica. Okay. Right. <laughs> and uh, um, obviously, Linkin Park's first uh, two albums, The Hybrid Theory, Meteora. Uh, I really dig uh, Soul Dweller's first album. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and uh, his latest, uh, well, his uh, fairly latest album, End of an Empire, was really cool as well. And I dig all his instrumental stuff he does. Um, Zardonic, his uh, album Antihero. Like, I don't know if you've heard of Zardonic. This guy, he looks like his mask is a, a crossbreed between um, um, Spawn, Bane, the Predator, and uh, one of those cyborg uh, guys from... Um, of uh, the Mortal Kombat games, one of the cyborg versions of whichever ninja happens to be. Cyrax. It's like a crossbreed of that. Nice. Cyrax, yeah. He, 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 his music is basically take like hardcore drum and bass or very energetic, you know, like um, uh, house dance music, but mm. minus that, you know, the light synth stuff, just the heavy uh, beat, you know, like the yeah, well produced cool. beat. Yeah. Uh, then add a few elements of industrial metal, black metal. And death metal, like he's done remixes of bands like Meshuggah, uh, Cannibal Corpse, um, Nirvana, uh, uh, Samarl. He's done, and he's he's very he's he's just really good. I, I, so I dig Antihero, uh, Bloodstained Child. I really dig the album Epsilon, although it's too bad Sophia had to leave the band because of the way they were treating her. Um, yeah, <laughs> Japanese people don't seem to treat the Western band members very well. Oh, no. <laughs> no offense to any Japs out there, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So that was kind of sad. But she's got her own band now. Season of Ghosts is a pretty cool band, uh, uh, and yeah, mainly a lot of melodic death metal stuff. So anything by In Flames, I really enjoy their stuff, with the exception of a few of their recent stuff. But I mean, I don't mind it, but it's not to my taste. Right. Um, Scar Symmetry, I really enjoy the stuff with Christian Alveston. That guy can sing, um, and he could growl. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the two new vocalists uh, who replaced him, but, uh, uh, to think that they need, like, two guys to do what one guy could do is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, yeah, Disamonia Mundi is quite good. And then, obviously, like, some of the classic bands, you know, like Metallica, I really enjoy. Megadeth's cool. Mm-hmm. So, um... Yeah, uh, I've started getting into Iron Maiden. I never was an Iron Maiden fan, really, until, like, recently. So I've only started getting into their stuff. So I'm late to the party. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much... <laughs> you that's were born much... late to that party, my friend. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but in uh, comparison <laughs> to a lot of my friends who are like, oh, do you listen to Iron Maiden? And back then I was like, no, nah, don't listen to Iron Maiden. Right. Now I'm like, oh, now I'll listen to them now. It was like, and then they're like, ah, oh, see, we knew you'd come around. And the same goes for Tool, you know, like, I mean, like, I'd heard of Tool back then, but I never bothered to check them out. So, um, yeah, the uh, Tool, I've just been listening to them a lot lately as well. So, yeah, that's <laughs> that's pretty much me on the music end. Yeah, yeah Tool's fucking awesome. Uh, back in 
the day when uh metal was like kind of what all my friends listened to uh they were really into like anthrax and judas priest and stuff and yeah i mean they're all good bands mm, yeah yeah then no, i i it, but uh <laughs> Yeah, when metal was a thing, like, I mean, I was a kid then, I didn't even know it was a thing, with the exception of when every single time they played uh, Bring Me to Life by Evanescence over and over <laughs> and over and over again. Wait, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I set that shit on my alarm clock for like a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, no, that that's the uh, that's the only time, like, I was kind of aware as a kid, I was like, maybe rock metal's a thing. But uh, otherwise, back then, it was mainly, like, in South Africa, there's not really a metal scene here, per se. Like, I think we've only got three bands that are actually known overseas. The rest are kind of, like, either, you know, like, split up or on hold or, you know, <laughs> or something like that. So, yeah, there's not much of a metal scene here uh, when it comes to actually active bands. There are metal heads here. Like, don't get me wrong, there are metal heads here. But, like, in comparison to the rest of the population, like, not many. It's like we could probably fill like probably a a, a, a a block of you know flats apartments. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> at the end of it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's that. Um, now another question I want to ask you is um, so just bring it up here. Um, now, what anime soundtrack is your favorite? What anime soundtrack is my favorite? Ah, oh, fuck. Um... One you can listen to like right through to the end. Shit. Uh, <laughs> man. Shisa. <laughs> probably Bebop, I guess. Yoko Kano's fucking amazing. Um Yeah, probably yeah. Bebop. Mm. Yeah, the the Bebop one, I can also listen to that forever. But uh, my, in my in my opinion, the best ones are apart from the Cowboy Bebop one are I love the Samurai Shampoo one. That yeah, one's well, yeah. nice and <laughs> relaxing. Amazing. Yeah, that one's nice and relaxing to get into when you're working. Um also Yoko Kano, I believe. No, that, that no, that was new job is uh, new job oh, is. Oh no, no, no. Say. wow, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I that, got it's all good because it was the same director. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, the Berserk 1997 soundtrack and the whole standalone complex again. That's Yoko Kano as well. So that's yeah, pretty yeah. sick. And, and the uh, Garden of the no Garden. Yeah, yeah. And Garden of the Sinners uh, and Madoka Magica had some really awesome music as well. Yeah, so that good. was Yuki Kajira. So, mm. yeah, that's pretty much my anime composers. I can listen to all that, like, right through to the end, never get bored with the music. I can just have it on a loop all day. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing I want to ask is uh, the YouTube ad crisis that happened recently, did it affect you in any way? Uh, the ad crisis? No. I mean, because I, I don't post uh, consistently because I don't have the time. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so, no, not really. I mean, it's not like I'm fucking making money right now anyways. No, I got like mm. what, fucking 1,100 subscribers or something. So, no, it, it didn't affect <laughs> me. No. So, so no, 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 not your views, anything like that. Everything's still pretty much A-OK to that side. I mean, for the most part, uh, as far as I can tell, at least, my views have kind of been in decline because of the lack of content. Um, mm. so yeah, uh, I mean, as if I posted more consistently, I'd be able to answer that a little bit better, but as it is, <laughs> I, I can't see anything. No. Okay. No, that's all right. Uh, um, and, uh, has, uh, now obviously, uh, an- uh, anime channels, you know, they tend to get, uh, hit a lot with, uh, copyright strikes and stuff from oh, Japanese yeah. companies. Have you ever been hit by any strikes before? Um, I was hit by one, and it was for my Yu Show review um, because I sang the uh, the intro song, and I played it a little bit too. What? Long. Yeah. Because so, you sang it. And because well, I played it uh, a little bit <laughs> oh, too long. Oh. Yeah, while I was like singing it, and it was a uh, it was a whole thing. But anyways, point is, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got hit uh, by one, and then I because of my editing style and because of the fact that I was so afraid to be hit by copyrights ever. I mm. think I'm less likely to get hit than most people. Um, yes. Because it's just way harder for the algorithm to find the, their content in my shit. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it, it doesn't generally affect me too much. I mean, you know, I'll get, like, a fucking, like, a monetization thing. But the only strike I ever got was uh, the Yu Hawk show. Okay, all right. And uh, you uh, did you 
like if, uh, did you uh, counter file it or did you just wait for the strikes duration to just wear off um, I waited for the strikes duration to wear off and uh, fucking as a suggestion to anybody out there don't do that fight it <laughs> yeah definitely definitely just fight no, it. I have yeah no, I, I haven't um, received any strikes uh, yet, but what did happen is my review of um, uh, Tales of Zestiria the Cross, mm -hmm. uh, that shit, when it got uploaded, it got blocked. Bandai Namco blocked it. So then what I did was, uh, obviously, I filed a dispute and they uh, lifted it off within like a, a few hours or so. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, um, no, but, uh, uh, nothing that much really. Like I did just if I if I upload an AMV or if I have a particular background music playing a bit too loud, I might just get a, a copyright claim saying saying you know the revenue goes to whoever. But that's about the extent of it. So right. yeah, <laughs> I've never been affected by that stuff. But uh, uh, thanks to Digibros, how to avoid content ID video. I now know what to do with my editing now, especially with the new direction my mm -hmm. ch channel's going. So <laughs> right. Mm. Yeah. Um, now, jeez, uh, I keep asking you so many anime questions. <laughs> only. <laughs> yeah, uh, do you have a favorite anime opening? Favorite anime opening. Um, I think Death Parade is probably the catchiest anime opening there is. Oh um, yes. Which is why it's not my favorite. Um, that shit will get in your brain. Um, so my favorite anime opening. Fuck. That is tough. Um, <laughs> I'm going through them in my head right now, trying to figure it out. Uh, probably <laughs> Trigun. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, yeah, that's... Dort. Yeah, anything with the guitar just sounds freaking awesome. Yes. But, yes. No, because I watched Trigun recently, so I, I, I know how good that intro is. I was mm -hmm. pretty much enticed to check it out because of uh, someone's video they made on on the guitarist but uh, yeah that was that that was a really cool show now but for me um actually uh i haven't uploaded it yet i'm uploading it tomorrow though by the time this podcast goes up <laughs> it'll be long past that right. um i uh, i'm uploading a, a video i worked on uh, my my top um 10 favorite anime openings of all time mm -hmm. so i'm i'm gonna tell you it now uh, right. My number one, my number one pick was because uh, usually it would be a classic one that you know that stood the test of time or something like that. But uh, uh, Kiz Niver's opening, that recent one before the frontman of Boom Boom Satellites passed away, um, that I've never shit seen is. Kiz Niver. Oh really? Yep. Oh, so it's 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 a it's a, it's, a, it's an okay show, but I do recommend you check it out because it's something different from uh, what Trigger you know usually do because Trigger usually you know the in batches insane action and yeah, stuff they're like just, yeah just yeah <laughs> yeah basically but uh uh yeah it's not like kill a kill or anything like that it's it's got the same art style sure but it's uh it's not done you know with the, the like as you say the batch of uh crazy fight scenes and the gynax stuff it's right. just it's it's a little more you know grounded and it's like a, an attempt to tell like a drama story but the music is fantastic especially that opening like uh gosh uh it really sucks um what happened to the frontman of boom boom satellites but uh they they were a pretty amazing group and i freaking loved that opening theme i think it was like one that just blew me away from your typical you know the the usual ones you get so, you oh, know yeah. and i was just and the, when i saw the animation that went with it i was just like oh Oh my gosh, this is totally different, you know. So, yeah, oh, that, uh, mm, yeah. I don't think you'll be able to find the uh, the uh, opening, like with the opening visuals and stuff on YouTube. I think Trigger keep taking it down. Yeah, but uh, if you if, if you were, you can watch the music video, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so yeah, just uh, look up uh, "Lay Your Hands on Me" by Boom Boom Satellites, and uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a really good song. That's definitely replaced the classic on my list. Yeah. Um, okay, so I got a, a final few questions. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I don't, don't, don't want to keep you too long. Oh, um, uh, do you have a favorite video game or favorite type of video game that you like to play? Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. Yep. I've never played that game, but everyone sends praise about it. So I've definitely got to check that game yeah. out before I die. <laughs> <laughs> I adore it. It is phenomenal. Oh, sorry, just a sec. 
Okay. Almost. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. I'm definitely. Uh, I got to edit that out too. <laughs> um. Uh. But yeah. No. Um. Yeah, I need to check out Kingdom Hearts because so many YouTubers I watch, uh, con- uh, uh, obviously you now included, they've seen <laughs> they've seen praise about that game, and I've, mm. I I I never you know grew up with a console or anything. I only got my first uh, computer when I was like in <laughs> to go in the, uh, midway through my final year of junior school, going into high school. Right. So, <laughs> so I, I uh, the only video games I played before that was like I said uh, when I got the chance at a friend's house or cousins places was devil may cry the tekken games obviously mm-hmm. um kill zone the first one was pretty awesome uh yeah like games like that were i used to play a lot as a kid because those were the only ones like my cousins and that had but when i started getting into gaming i've really been into uh rpgs so i freaking i play the shit out of skyrim <laughs> right, well, <laughs> and yeah. The, uh, any, yeah any other elder scrolls games are awesome and uh the witcher 3 is pretty cool as well i freaking dig the witcher and um yeah i'm really looking forward to cyberpunk 2077 i just hope that game doesn't come out in 2077 only because of all the freaking <laughs> delays <laughs> and everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> because if that happened that'll be like it'll be like on par with tools trolling with their fans you know with the new album it'll be the <laughs> same level of trolling so yeah, definitely. I hope it doesn't only come out in twenty seventy seven. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Um, how do you how do you go about editing your videos? Like, what kind of uh, software do you use, and how long does it take you on average to complete a video if you have uh, if you have time to do so? It depends on the video. Um, I go. Oh man, it really depends on the video. If it's a long form review with all the effects and all that shit. It probably take me anywhere from two to three weeks to complete just the editing process because uh, I have so much other shit that I have to do. I use mm. uh, Photoshop. <clears throat> pardon me. Photoshop, okay. After Effects, uh, Adobe Premiere, and Sony Vegas for various different things that each program does, you know, better than the others. Mm. Um, yeah. So that's for like my long form reviews, and then you know, on all the time it takes to write it and record it and just it's yeah. ridiculous like you have no it's just oh my god so much work into those which is why you don't see them very often um for my like break it down series uh where i talk about like filler and all that kind of stuff um for that it takes a lot less time it would probably take me two maybe two days about two days to edit it at most if i'm like being lazy um usually it'd take about one and yeah, that, yeah, that's about it. And I only use Premiere and Photoshop for that. I don't go into After Effects or Vegas or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I use. I just. Uh, I've been using VideoPad for quite some time, but that's like basically only a minor upgrade from a, f- a freaking Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> but <Yeah>. um, <laughs> but uh, now I'm starting to get the hand of. Um, Vegas, though, I've still got a lot to learn from that stuff. So I, I still, I still think my videos are gonna look like total trash until, <laughs> until I get, to, uh, until I get used to all the different transitions and the effects and everything like that, okay. which I'm hoping to get good at soon. You're not bad. So You're really <laughs> not bad. the the thing about Vegas is that to me, Vegas is a uh, Adobe <laughs> Premiere Lite. So. It has it has certain things that Adobe doesn't, certain visual effects that you can get in Vegas uh, and just have them done very quickly, as opposed to going into like um, After Effects and having to you know make them from scratch or whatever. So uh, Vegas is good for that, but uh, you'll get the hang of Vegas very very quickly, and then when you do, it'll become irrelevant because it'll be like, <laughs> oh, it can't do all this other stuff. What the fuck? And then you'll go to Premiere, and then you'll just be confused and sad for the rest of your life. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, Vegas is cool, but, uh, yeah, don't get too tripped up over it. Eventually, you'll run the gamut of everything that it's capable of, and then you'll realize mm. it really wasn't all that advanced to begin with. <laughs> yeah, well, when you said it, when you said of uh, uh, Vegas Pro's, um, uh, 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 Adobe Premiere, uh, uh Light, uh-huh. I just thought of that recent uh, thing with, uh, Chad Kruger calling Sto- Stone Sour Nickelback Light. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's <messed up. laughs> that's literally what I thought. <laughs> Damn. Did you, did you hear about that though? Yeah, yeah, I did. It was it's been on Twitter a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was that's hilarious. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chad Kruger wishes. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, the final question I want to ask you, which is finally another one that is outside of anime. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, Marvel or DC? Which Depends one do you prefer? On if we're talking about movies, cartoons, or comic books. Uh, a- a- anything you can you can you can you can even jump between the two depending on which format it gets presented in uh hmm well fuck uh <laughs> video games it's it's a dead draw because uh marvel had better retro games and uh dc has batman um yeah arkham i should say for movies uh marvel like there's no comparison um <laughs> there, there just isn't uh like in the '90s and '80s, it would be DC, but now it's Marvel. Um, mm. For comic books, DC, just straight up. Uh, I I love DC dearly, uh, and I think Marvel tried very much to humanize their characters uh, more in the '60s and '70s and make them more relatable, and that worked out very well. But then the '80s rolled around, and shit got gritty, and it got dark, and it got psychological, <laughs> and it got real real quickly with. Uh, the whole Gotham verse and Jump City and the Teen Titans and all that stuff. So I mean, yeah, for me, uh, it, it would be DC comic book wise. But there are some Marvel uh, properties that I think are better than the vast majority of DC properties. It's just DC mm. overall has better properties in their comic books, and I think they execute mm. it better. Yeah, um, me uh, for with regards to video games, uh, like I agree with you there. Marvel have a lot more retro titles, like the Marvel versus Street Fighter, Capcom, whatever. Right, like right. That, 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 that that's all cool. I grew I grew up playing that a lot. Um, then, uh, but like with regards to the newer stuff, uh, like you said, there's the Arkham games, and Injustice is pretty sick as well. So I yeah, have- the Justice. I can't with Injustice. Injustice is just skinned fucking Mortal Kombat. It's just Mortal Kombat with different <laughs> costumes. That's all it is. <laughs> that is that isn't Superman and Batman. That's, that's some bullshit. <laughs> like, fucking, oh, so I'm playing Liu Kang, except now he controls water. Now shut the... F- it, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> um, but, but it's still better than a lot of the other... Uh, games that Marvel came out with that flop, so... <laughs> that, that is true. Uh, There's no doubt. Uh, um, uh, in terms of uh, movies, I'm kind of torn on both because, like, I mean, uh, I know there's a lot of, he- like, really big flaws with the DCEU, but the stuff that's done right, uh, and, uh, I'm, and I am a sucker for those darker visuals and stuff mm-hmm. that Zack Snyder sometimes does. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just... When it comes to Zack Snyder, I think he has a uh, you know like good ideas and stuff, but it's just I think he meddles too much. Like for example, if he gets paired with a good writer, if he does, yeah. and then the writer like comes up with this amazing thing that could work, and then Zack Snyder's like, oh no no, we gotta <laughs> we gotta edit it, and then and then then you get the final product, and it's like, right. dude, so so he meddles too much, I think. But uh, but I mean, otherwise visually and stuff, I think he's he, he's great. Um, yeah, he's a stunning visual director, but uh, the mm. writing for at least Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, Suicide Squad—they were incredibly poor. If you ask me, yeah, Affleck Suicide is Squad especially. Though, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Suicide Squad was just a massive a disappointment for me yeah. because, like, it literally it took super villains and tried to make them like gangster and stuff. And I was like, what? These are supposed to be super villains. <laughs> like, it was not. <laughs> yeah, it was a huge and, uh, letdown. Mm, it was like I mean, uh, uh, like the uh, only uh, like I mean the, the whole thing with Margot Robbie. Like I mean, yes, she did do a good performance as Harley Quinn, but it's just like the whole way they decide to you know like uh, outfit her and everything. It didn't like quite gel, you know. Like so, it was like, and then everyone's like copying the cosplay afterwards. I was just like, you go to a con and then it's like everyone's just the same. And I was like, oh fuck. I mean, <laughs> the fucking same thing after Dark Knight though. Everyone was Heath Ledger. Everyone wanted yeah. to know how he got those scars. It was like it was the same <laughs> shit. Like yeah. th- that's the thing. Whenever a incredibly popular, particularly insane character comes out, they they're gonna copy it. I have no problem <laughs> with Margot Robbie. It was a reimagining. It was fine. Jared yeah. Leto, I have a huge problem with. Um, yeah, yeah. Jared Leto's the biggest yeah. problem. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. that definitely okay. wasn't Joker. That Dude was like problem. trying to be emo, edgy Joker. Yeah. Um. 
And then uh, to wrap up with the, in terms of the, um, sorry, there's a phone going off here, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, to wrap up with the ca- cartoons and the comics, mm. cartoon wise, definitely DC. They have oh. the much better cartoons. Oh, yeah. But a long shot. And comic books, um, w- uh, like when it comes to DC, I only read the Batman books. Like uh-huh. I very rarely any- read anything outside of it unless, you know, like there's a really good team behind it. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, uh, like I really enjoy stuff by like uh, Jeff Loeb, uh, Scott Snyder, um, all that. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, Marvel, I grew up with a lot. Oh, damn, there goes the phone again. <laughs> <laughs> so just going to wait for the ring Um Okay, so the comic, the uh, uh, comics, um, Marvel comics. Right. I grew up with a lot of the uh, of the nineties uh, stuff, you know, uh, with the, when Jim Lee was getting his uh, his big break and um, Todd McFarlane was going out with his stuff and all that. So I and Joe Madureira, all that. So I mm. love the nineties X Men books, especially. Yeah, they were um, pretty. The yeah, whole yeah. Age of yeah, the Age of Apocalypse series mm-hmm. and everything like that. That shit was awesome. My friend and I, we used to like trade comics, collect comics together, everything like that. Mm-hmm. It was just a blast and those were, those were fantastic. The writing was superb, all that and uh, it was a great alternate universe and even when it was back to the regular universe, there was some great stuff going on. Yeah. So that's what makes me so upset when Fox, you know, won't collaborate with Marvel and stuff. Fuck I mean, the Fox. stuff they could do. Fuck, <laughs> oh, fuck, fuck Fox, Fox with the bad end as of good a break. As, yeah. As good as good as Logan and Deadpool were, I, mm. I like it would have been better if those movies were part of the MCU. One hundred percent. I mean, you're you're right. The '90s Marvel comics were fucking amazing. Uh, with the especially X Men with the addition of like uh, Gambit and Psylocke and Rogue, and then going into the X Force later on, and uh, mm. the, D- Deadpool and uh, Cable, like that was amazing. They they uh, mm. sp- some of the Spider Man runs were fucking phenomenal. A lot of people hate the Scarlet Spider. I fucking adore it. I think it's great. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, yeah. There's a lot of uh, there was a lot of good Marvel stuff in the '90s. I can't deny that, but. Yeah, you're, mm. you're right. Fox is a clusterfuck. Like, they're just... Su- I don't even like... Everyone's like, oh, Days of Future Past, but now suck a dick. I don't like any of it. I don't like <laughs> anything Fox has done that isn't Deadpool or Logan. That's it. Yeah, that's me pretty much as well, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, just, but, just, I mean, if you like it out there, fucking be about it. Like, I'm not going to tell you not to like it. It's just... Yeah. I, I, oh, I just... I don't. Mm, yeah. Uh, I I agree with you there. Like um, I mean, they 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 the, the those other films they do have enjoyable and so, uh, cool moments sometimes, mm-hmm. but overall as a overall product, it's like it just feels totally different to its comic book counterparts, and yes. for, especially from what Marvel's doing nowadays, you know. So, and I mean, like you'd think like um, with the you know with the way they're able to do costumes now mm-hmm. they could do the x-men characters more or less accurately and i'm so tired of that argument of oh well wolverine's co- uh, comic book costume won't look good on screen i was like nope. B- B- bitch bitch <laughs> if batten if batten the sun can do a much less down costume that looks really good when they do their superpower beatdowns mm-hmm. like how can you say it, uh, it won't work on screen like yeah. come on I it mean, looks you, fucking awesome you can make it fucking work they had that little uh that little thing where he opened up the box and his costume was in there and it was the blue and yellow and shit. It's like, come on, you can do it. Like, yeah. it's not that... It's it's possible. I mean, it might not work, it might work, whatever. But it, it's fucking possible. At least give it a shot. Yeah. It, Fox in general is just fucking up so bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Definitely, definitely. So, yeah, that uh, Fox needs to uh, really work on some shit there. Just but um, fucking quit. <laughs> They, everything. <laughs> I'm not just talking about that. Fox in general, as a company, top to bottom, I fucking hate them. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Oh uh, well. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> we. I have to go. Uh, mm-hmm. We are out of time. But um, thank you so much for uh, joining me. Um, and I hope you enjoyed yourself. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and uh, d- don't be a stranger, man. I have another podcast series starting soon. It's called the um, the Otacast, and that is not interview style. That is just uh, talking style. You know, just to talk normal, normal podcast stuff. So no interview stuff. Everyone will be familiar with each other, and it will all be good. So don't be a stranger. You can join us at any time if you're free. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I'm more than willing to come back. This has been pretty great. <laughs> awesome, awesome. 
Okay, so guys, um, I will be leaving the link in the description box below to uh, Gabriel's channel. Be sure to check him out. He makes amazing content. Go subscribe to his channel, like his videos, everything like that. He makes awesome videos. He's a really cool guy. And also, uh, guys, um, if you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, all that stuff. And if uh, you would like to be featured on the Animetal Cast, then uh, check out uh, my Patreon and all my other social media uh, platforms uh, to see as how you can do so. So thank you for tuning in, guys. And until next time, have a kick-ass day. Woo! There we go. And that concludes today's episode of the Annie Metal Cast podcast. I do hope you all enjoyed the show. Please, please remember to check out uh, the Gabriel's channel. The link is in the description box below and here at the end of the video. Also, guys, um, if you want to find out how you can be a part of the Anime Metal cast, then be sure to check out my Patreon page. Also, guys, if you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to give it a, a, a like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the comments box below and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to follow me on all my social media pages, which is Facebook, Twitter, my anime list, and uh, I now have a Reddit and Vidme page, so definitely check those out. Those will also be in the description box below. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and until the next episode, take care and have a kick-ass day.